All right. Hello. Welcome to Roll Rundowns with Dammit. Uh, today we are going to cover the trader role. Uh, we're going to kind of go through startup and some tips and tricks and things on how to get everything done and hopefully answer any questions you may have about getting this role going and some of the reasons why it's amazing. So first and foremost, when you load in, there will be a bunch of yellow markers all over your map if you're a new player. And over in St. Denis, right here at the general store, there should be a yellow marker uh, to talk to Crips. So when you go there, it'll trigger a like a cutscene. And Crips will come out and he'll tell you about this amazing opportunity that he has. And um, he'll talk about how he's a, an amazing tanner, but he needs a partner, you know. And you have to pay the upfront, cross, uh, upfront costs for a trader company. And he's going to want 15 gold bars to start this. And if you happen to have the 15 gold bars, and this is what you want to do right at this moment, you give him the 15 gold bars, and he will send you on a mission, and you'll end up going someplace over by Rhodes to steal a wagon to get you started. Now, if you do all of this and you don't have the 15 gold bars yet, it's not a big deal. At some point, when you do get those gold, uh, you will have in your satchel, so if you hold down your right arrow, it'll pull up your satchel, L1 back to the end of your uh, item here, um, two times till you get to the document section. Once you're in there, you're going to scroll, and you probably won't have as many as I do, but you're going to go to letters. And let's see. in your letters is going to be a letters, uh, letter from Crips. <clears throat> and this letter from Crips is going to, if you hit the square and go into read, it's going to tell you pretty much everything that he told you when you did the, uh, went into the general store. And he wants to go into business with you, and, you know, it's a great opportunity, the whole spiel. And if you read that, after you've read that letter from Crips, you can go to your camp. Uh, this wagon right here is called the Wilderness Outfitters. So if you hit triangle and go into your Wilderness Outfitters uh, menu, and it's not going to show up for me because I've already got it done. <clears throat> but, what do you need? there you go, you've got his wonderful self, um, you'll be able to have an option to buy a butcher's table. Um, oh, right there. Now, I, again, it's not going to show you the what I, you know, because I have it checkmarked, but it's 15 gold. <clears throat> Unless you get it on sale. Um, Rockstar does like to, on Tuesdays, you know, randomly throw different things on sale. And they do sometimes rotate through the different rolls that are available to buy and put those on sale. So they'll take like five gold bars off so you can wait and get it for 10 gold or you can just buy it for the 15. Either way. Um, so that is how you get that started. And once you've done that, hold on, I have to back out. Then you will have a butcher's table show up in your camp. And this is your butcher's table. Now, even though you've paid the 15 gold to get it started, it's still called Crips Trading Company. <laughs> so, from here, what you do is you start out automatically with a small wagon, which can carry 25 goods for delivery. So, you have three bars here. You have your materials which is what you donate to the table. Uh, you have your production, which requires uh, supplies. And right now I need a supply mission, but I was holding off on that. So there's two different ways. You can order the supplies. So you pay 20 bucks, uh, you'll wait 10 minutes, and then the supplies will just automatically show up and Crips will get back to work, provided that he has enough materials that you've given him. The other way is there's an actual mission that you can do, and it's short. You're usually running someplace close by and picking up supply bags or supply wagons, or you are hunting a specific animal and taking it to a friend of Crips. 
<clears throat> sometimes you're stealing them from other trader game uh, NPC type things. But those are usually the quickest way to do it. Plus, if you're new, you get some great XP out of it and um, some kills sometimes. You can loot some bodies. Uh, I recommend doing, if you're just starting, I recommend doing the actual missions and saving yourself the $20. Um, so once you have your materials, and I'll go over that in a second, um, and once you have your supplies, then Crips will start making goods. And for every one good that Crips makes, it takes him two minutes. So to do a wagon, a small wagon with 25 goods, it's going to take you 50 minutes to wait for those goods to build up, and then you can do a delivery. <clears throat> Once you have done this a couple times and got it moving and, and got some experience going and you rank up, you will unlock a medium wagon at uh, Trader Roll rank 5. And then you'll have to give $500 and you'll go back to your wilderness outfitter where we just were at the wagon and you can unlock that for $500. And then you can sell up to 50 goods. So it bounces up to 50. And then you can keep going and keep selling and ranking up. And when you hit trader rank 10, you can unlock the large wagon. And the large wagon is going to cost you 800 uh, No, I'm sorry. The large delivery wagon is $750. And that's the one that you can carry a full 100 goods. So it'll take you a good four hours, give or take, four and, you know, over, it depends on if you order or if you do the supplies. But once you do, the large wagon will, on a short delivery, give you $500, and on a long delivery, it'll give you $625. So that's nice, and it's something that just works in the background. On the materials, <clears throat> I have actually pulled out my hunting wagon here and put some random things in it to give you guys an idea of the cost, um, like the worth of some of the things that you can go hunt and donate to Crips. And I would like to point out that no matter what you donate for materials, it does not affect the quality of the goods. So you don't have to run around and make sure that everything is three star so that way you get a max payout. It doesn't matter. Um, Personally, if I'm hunting animals for crypts, I go for both quality and quantity. So, whereas a three-star something will give you more than a one-star, a one-star, I wouldn't turn it down anyway. Like, I throw everything on my horse or everything in the wagon and bring it back and give everything. If I find three-star three star things, I do try and make sure to keep them three-star, just because it does boost your material bar more, but... I'm not overly picky where I'm only going after three-star things. That just takes way too long. So, Once you reach rank 10, <clears throat> you also can get this hunting wagon. It runs $875. You can hold up to five uh, animal carcasses or large pelts. So anything that you would carry over your shoulder, um, like bison or moose, or bear, or something like that, those count in the same category as a full large carcass, like a panther or a deer. Um, you can also carry pelts, and I believe it's up to 50. Like, you can carry 50 different pelts that you skin off of things. So I have a range of things in here that I've kind of scooped up, so that way we can show some prices. And over here... Um, two of my favorite things to do for Crips. So I'm going to grab the muskrat first because this one has always baffled me. Um, so if you go into your category here, go into your materials. This is a combination of everything that is in your satchel, in your wagon, or if you don't have a wagon, you have a horse and it's on your horse. Um, if you scroll up to where it hits you down to the bottom, <clears throat> this will be the things that are on your horse, in your hand, or on your wagon. So I have a perfect muskrat carcass I'm holding in my hand. Now, this is worth $5 of materials. And if you look up 
in the top right corner, there's like a, a pelt outline. That's the materials bar. So if you scroll through here, there's the white, which is what's already in the crypts table. And then there's like a shadow white, like a gray, a little like a light gray. That is showing how much your material bar will actually boost depending on what you're putting into it. So if we go to a poor deer carcass, um, <laughs> a perfect muskrat is worth five, whereas a poor deer is worth only $2.80. Um, you can only carry one deer on your horse, but you can carry two muskrats on each side of your horse. Um, so here's the legendary ghost panther pelt. And if you look up in the corner there, the bar actually jumped quite a bit because one of these is worth $30. Um, I also grabbed a perfect buck carcass. So you can see that those are $12 and 50 cents worth of for your material bar. And a perfect pronghorn buck is only $8 and 13 cents. So that way it gives you kind of a good idea of what you want to like hunt for. Um, perfect deer pelts. I'm just going to like, I got them all here, but I'll run down. So just a regular deer. A one-star entire carcass is worth $2.80. A two-star is worth $4.20. And a three-star is worth $8.75. <clears throat> a three-star pronghorn buck carcass is worth $8.13. But a small alligator perfect carcass is also worth $8.13. Um... And I'll get to why I'm making that comparison right there. Um, but gator pelts, like the small gator pelts, um, a three star is worth $4.38. A two star is worth $2.10. And a one star is worth $1.40. Whereas deer pelts are $2.81, $1.35, and $0.90. Cents. Um, deer are a little bit more harder to hunt and keep in good standing when you're new versus gators. So now that we've kind of covered your materials bar here and that, I am going to highly suggest um, here, and I even grabbed a small gator, but I told you guys what it was. So um, if you were just getting started out, I'm going to show you where we are in the map. I call this the peninsula. We are right by Blue Water Marsh, um, not too far away from St. Denis. Um, as a new player, St. Denis has everything. You have a fence, you have a general store, a butcher, a post office. There is a doctor, um, a barber, a tailor, um, several saloons, a poker table, a stable further down the tracks here. It is, um, and also as you unlock other rules, there is also a Gus right here and a bounty hunter board next to the sheriff station here. So I really, really push this as like a great place for new players because a town nearby that has everything you could want and just north of us is Van Horn. And so... Where I have camp right now is my favorite spot. There are alligators aplenty, um, large and small, and they don't really move that fast and they spawn in a lot. So you can actually come out here and gather a ton of gators right in the vicinity of this camp right here. Um, it's also really, really good for birds. And I'll go back into the materials and kind of walk through the birds. Um, small, um, small animals that go into your satchel are plenty here. I mean, of all different kinds and variations. Just above camp right here is a little thicket of trees, and it's great for squirrels. Um, all over around the water here, you can get toads and frogs. Um, next to this shack that's going to be right here, at night, you can get a bunch of rats. Um, throughout all times, little tiny birds that you can pick up and put in your pocket fly all over right here. And um, at night, you can actually get bats that fly over here too. 
so you have the whole range of pretty much everything that you can put in your, your satchel for small animals. And for larger, um, just right here, which is just a quick right away, all along this river, you can find deer. So if you want to kind of fill up everything, you can. Um, all around this area here, there are tons of heron birds, spoonbills, um, whooping cranes, um, ducks that fly over, loons that fly over. And when you skin those, I like to stock up on them and keep them in my satchel for whenever I'm busy doing other things, but Crips needs materials. So one heron plum is worth $1.50. And you can hold up to 30 of these. So that puts a really good dent in your materials bar when you donate them all. Um, egrets are also right here. They are worth $1.75. Um, uh, whooping cranes, $1.20. Let's see. Owls come over here at night. Those are good too, but not as plentiful as some of these other ones. Um, duck feathers are only 30 cents, but it's good to have them because they make good filler. Uh, so these little birds, I know they're only 60 cents. They're probably not worth a lot in hindsight, but um, I'll explain why I keep so many of these. They're not worth very much, but they really come in handy. Um, Definitely try and get the perfect, uh, perfect squirrels, perfect birds, perfect toads. Um, the way to do that the best is to use a small game arrow, which you don't have to have a roll for that. That availability locks through a pamphlet that you unlock when you turn uh, level 22, and you can run to any fence, and that pamphlet's $525. And I know it seems really steep, but the pamphlets also go on sale quite often if you want to wait. Um, but it's totally something that's a great asset to have if you're going to hunt and do trader roll stuff. Um, gator teeth, this is another reason I like this area, gator teeth are worth 80 cents, which doesn't seem like much by itself, but when you get 30 of them just from running around skinning gators and donating the gator pelts to Crips and just keeping these in your, your satchel for when you need them the most, they come in handy and they put a great dent in your materials bar. Um, here they are, spoonbills. Spoonbills are my favorite feather. They're worth $1.95. And if you get 30 of those, that really jumps your materials bar. So, with unlocking the trader roll, you will gain trader roll daily challenges. So, for example, today, um, once you hit level 20, now once you are, I think it's level 1 to 5, uh, six to ten. I, I think they jump. There, there's four different levels, but I'm not positive. There may be three. Um, anyway, you you get these dailies that you can do and earn gold. And one of the most frequent dailies is small animal carcasses donated to Crips. Um, sometimes they want ten small carcasses. Sometimes they want six perfect carcasses. And it doesn't matter what size they are. Um, but this is where the small game arrow comes into play. I run around and I find three star toads and squirrels and rats. And I hit them with that small game arrow and keep them at a perfect. And I put them in my pocket and I save them for when it becomes a daily. Because it's a lot easier to load into camp and check my dailies. And if I need six perfect carcasses, I just go up and I give them like six perfect toads. And then the daily's done and it was easy. Um, and because I keep so many small animal carcasses, dailies like these are amazing because they're quick and easy. And if I only have a couple minutes to do dailies, but I want to keep my streak, these are my go-to. Um, so I think it was the day before yesterday, we actually had two, uh, two separate dailies for the trader. One was to donate 20 carcasses in 10 minutes. And then another was 10 small animal carcasses. So I went to Crips and I donated 20 toads and I got both dailies for it 
done easy. All right, so that kind of covers your hunting and your your stuff. I highly, highly recommend this. I mean, you can put your camp anywhere, but I'm going to go into Eagle Eye here and just run out here. And you can see over there, there are just gators and birds lined up all over the place, all up and down. See, there's another gator. There's one. Sandhill cranes, just tons of stuff just sitting right there, easy to grab. Um, muskrats, quick and easy, put them on the side of your horse, bring them back. Um, and it's like this all over this area here, and it makes it super, super nice to have everything so close. Uh, so right here, you've got more gators up and down. we got some spoonbills that spawn right here. That's a regular spawn for them. Um, just behind that little bush right over here are usually cranes. Um, more muskrats, more gators, heron, um, toads, frogs. They're all over the place here. And if you're quiet and listen, which there's not going to be any right now. I think it's too soon. Um, but all over the place up here, you get bats that fly over at night. So if you get those where they are a daily, at least you know where to get them. And I always try and keep as many of these little things in my pockets as possible. Um, all right, so here's our hunting wagon. It's got a cute little night lights. Um, when you buy this, I recommend going to the stable, putting insurance on it. So that way, if you destroy it or if somebody else destroys it, it fixes kind of quick. And if you are out hunting and you have bought the hunting wagon, the way to summon it or dismiss it is to go uh, left arrow into your free roam menu. Not hold it, just tap it. Sorry. Uh, scroll down to stables. Go to vehicles owned vehicles and you can either call out your hunting wagon or dismiss it so, um, another thing that comes with the trader roll is your stew pot you have the ability to buy your stew pot right from rank one and it's six hundred and fifty dollars and I know that it sounds like these are all steep but once you get the trader roll rolling You'll make a whole lot of money. Um, even if you just do nothing but local runs, you know, that's $500 each time. And with these, you have four different qualities. Uh, five, sorry. You have low, medium, high, which really doesn't do a whole lot for you. You have your superior, and then you have your, like, really top quality one. These are the special ones. And if you make one of these... You and anybody else in your posse can eat them and your cores boost up. Which is nice because it saves you. See the little gold cores flashing down in the corner now? Um, it's just a nice thing to have. It saves any meat that you have cooked in your satchel so that way while you're out, but while you're running around camp you're doing stuff, it's nice to have a stew pot going. Oh, let's see. So I wanted to cover um, also where to go to find the information. So if you go into your map menu and hit your, I believe it's your options button, um, scroll down to progress and then come over here to where it says roles. And here's all the categories of the roles. So you want to jump over to Trader, and here's where you can scroll through and see what all you unlock. Um, these little special tokens, so you see I have 39 of them left just because there's a lot of like lower things that I haven't bothered even buying. Um, but you get these tokens, let me scroll back to one, and these tokens 
you get as you level up and you use them to unlock certain things. So like, for example, this horse, you would need one token to unlock it, the ability to buy this horse and everything requires the token. Um, some of them, uh, let me see here. I may have one more thing up higher. Okay. So like, for example, the next grade up of the quad ruber requires two tokens. And I believe the third one required three. It's been a while. Um, this is your trader horse. Um, it's one of, it's a really good horse. I actually own both of the level three ones. They are, they are sturdy. They're nice to ride. I will actually pull mine out so that way you guys can kind of see it. Um, it says $665 retail right now, but they are on sale. They are normally $950. Um, also, you unlock, uh, see those, these say three gold, but again, these are on sale as well right now. So that's not really helpful for price ranging, but go through this, check it all out. Um, you unlock all kinds of things. You get, um, each role has its own little emote that you can unlock and use. It has different clothing outfits that you can unlock and use. Um, odd little things, rings, uh, you get haircuts <laughs> and each role comes with a gun belt and a holster that you unlock that's role specific, um, a handful of outfits, a couple other things, just good stuff to look at all together. Also, if you back out and you come up here and go over to awards, each role also has its own award categories, things that you can do, um, some of them are resettable, some of them are not. Um, each time you complete, so I'm going to start right here, make stews at camp. So I am not maxed out on this one, but I'm getting there. Um, so for every hundred stews that you make at camp, you get credit here. And when you hit um, 100, you can actually reset this award. So it's grayed out for right now because I'm not ready to reset it, but that one shows that you can reset and you can hit square. And every time you reset one of these awards in any category, you get 0.4 gold. And it doesn't sound like a lot, but if you're doing things, there are so many of these awards for so many different things. I, I highly recommend that you take a minute and scroll through every single category and keep an eye on them. And one of the things that I like the most about these is you can actually pin these awards. And when I'm done going over them, I will show you a great way to quickly check them. So that way you don't have to go into the menu, go into progress, come over here to awards, scroll to this one. Um, if you just hit pin, which is holding your right joystick down, it'll actually put it in a category in your free room menu. So for trader, this one's not resettable, but you do earn... XP when you complete these and you get like a corny little belt buckle that you can actually wear if you wanted to. Um, so you might hear me in some of my other videos, especially like my daily, um, dailies with damn it videos talk about award buckles or there's a buckle for that or, um, something along those lines. And it's usually referring to these because I actively work towards as many of these as I can to reset and make more gold. Um, a resettable one is earning cash from trading. This one you don't have to put any effort into because if you're just working the role, you will make money. You just have to make sure you keep an eye out as to when you max it so that way you can go in and reset it and still earn credit for the money that you make. Um, when you achieve any of the milestones, unless you have them turned off, in the left mid of your screen, a little pop-up will show up that you've hit a milestone for an award. And when it says gold, that means you've maxed it and you can reset it if it's a resettable one. Um, the next one is resupply missions. You have to do a thousand. 
Um, I normally just order the supplies, so I've been trying to as much as possible if I have time and patience to actually run them, because <clears throat> it's kind of driving me crazy that I have not reset this one yet. Uh, the next one is sell goods to buyers. So 5,000 goods sold. So you can actually work on these two at the same time because you're making money and selling goods. So if you get to the large trader wagon, it's 100 goods and it racks up pretty quick. Um, the stew one. And the last one is selling to 15 different buyers. So this one is easiest achieved by rotating where you put your camp around because they're not all the same. You have different buyers for local deliveries than you do for long distance deliveries. And where you deliver to depends on where you start from. So after just kind of rotating camp around, you know, we went to the bayou, we went to Gap Tooth, we, we did up in Big Valley, and you just kind of rotate around until you hit 15 different buyers, and this one's good. It's not resettable, but it is what it is. <laughs> All right, so we've covered awards and unlocks. Um... I'm going to call out I'm going to call out my horse Eugenus, who's named after my husband. <laughs> um, this is not a good spot to show a horse. We are going to go into town real quick. So let's go to Blackwater. I also was going to go in and show you guys the outfits. It's got nice size to it. It's not like a tiny little pony that you... They're good and they're sturdy. And once you level them up and get them fully bonded to four, um, the Nacho Saddle, I mean, it's absolutely hideous, but it has the best um, stat boost to it for the horse. And the Hooded Stirrups, also the ugliest ones possible, but are good. So... We're in Blackwater, and there's a tailor right here. You can do this one of Hello, two ways, on in. but in your catalog, which you can pull up on your own, take a look at the latest styles there is a work, wear, and trade section. And if you come down here to the trader, because each one has it, these are your outfits. And your emote. Um, if you open up your catalog not standing at the, no um, at the tailor, if you change your mind, it'll be here, waiting for you. here we go. Uh, same thing applies. Just go over, come down to work, wear, and trade. Go to whatever role we're going to do trader right now, because that's the one we're talking about. And scroll over. These are your outfits. And... Here is the level one. Um, I highly suggest not wasting your money buying the lower quality horses, oh, like the level man, ones and the level twos, unless you're desperate for a better horse than the one that they give you. But it's worth it to kind of save your money and get that level three one. You can also buy your hunting wagon right from the catalog if you want, if you don't want to go to the stable. And uh, your emote, your saddle your gun belt, and your holster. And they do come in different colors. So if you go to a gunsmith, uh, there you can actually buy those and view them on your character. All right, so we're going to go in the dressing room and do a little bit of showing you what they are. So 
touch that outfit. That's not what I wanted to do at all. Hold on a second. I'm hitting buttons. <laughs> All right, down here to. Ch all right, we can back up. It's all good. All right, so the tiring him. Here we go. Interesting, uh, interesting outfit. So, what do you think? Um, you cannot wear any of the pieces separately except for the hat. The hat you can actually wear with anything you want, but the outfit itself stays as the outfit. So we have the Worthington, the Sunderland, and the Monterey. Monterey. Um, these are your hunting, uh, your trader ones. So no we're going to back out of that. I only stock the best in my shop. And I wanted to go. And you'll never be disappointed. All right then. But up there we'll... Here. Oh, thanks, Hugh. There's also a stable in Blackwater. Go to our. Uh, we're going to manage owned horses and go down to Hugh right here. So if you look at his stats, um, he's got good speed, he's got good acceleration, his handling is standard, um, but his stamina and health bars are completely full, which is really nice if you're running after animals, if you're doing stuff. I use them just to ride around the map in. Um, they're, they're a good sturdy horse. They are by far not the fastest horse, um, but they're still a great horse. Um, I do recommend them. So the, like I said, they are on sale right now, so you can't use the prices right now is what they have. The first two tier are, um, if you look at the bottom, where it shows the speed and the acceleration, like you can watch as the, the stats increase in the three tiers. So the first two tiers, uh, we've got a black one and a white one, and then a, a gray and a cremello, and then the third tier, which has the better stats, is the silver and the dapple rose gray. And that is the one that you unlock with the trader rule. And it doesn't matter what level you are in the game. So even if you're level 12, if you grind out through the trader roll, you can unlock these horses. And it's not like the Missouri Fox Trotter where you have to wait until you're like level 68. Or it's a good way to get a good horse um, just from doing a roll. All right. So um, I am going to cover some delivery information before I sign off on this. When you do a local delivery, um, you do not show up on the map as a mission. When you do a long distance delivery, a couple minutes in, you'll get a message that flashes up on the top of your screen and says that rival traders um, can see you, you know, they can, you can be attacked now. And the rival traders are other players in the game. Um, if you go within a certain range of another player, you will actually show up as a giant red blip on their mini-map, letting them know that there is a mission nearby that they can attack. Um, and people do attack the wagons. Uh, some people do it just for fun, because that's an aspect in the game. Um, other people do it for fun, and because if they take your wagon um, and they take it to a drop-off point then they get materials for their crypts, for their traders. And if it's an entire posse of people, the entire posse benefits for their each individual trader tables with materials. 
So it's actually pretty lucrative for people to steal wagons if they are not really feeling like hunting or it's also kind of fun. Um, if you are doing a wagon delivery and you get attacked, if you force close the game, when you reload back into the game, your goods will still be at your trader table. You don't lose anything. As long as you force close before they turn in your wagon or turn in, like if the wagon's destroyed, turn in your, your goods bags. As long as you force close before the mission is um, completed, you don't lose anything. So keep that in mind, especially as you are growing and learning. Um, in the beginning with the small and the medium wagons, just do locals. Um, unless it's a daily to do a long distance. I, I definitely <laughs> cannot stress that if you do long distance, you will show up as a mission and you could possibly be attacked. So keep that in mind. And I think I have covered everything that I can possibly think of. Um, feel free to ask any questions in the comments. I've been keeping a close eye on them and... I will answer anything I can to the best of my ability, and I hope you guys got enough information off of this to go out and grind this roll. Um, it's one of my favorites because you can fill up your material bar, you can make sure that your supplies are good, and then you have at least 50 minutes to go and do anything else. Work on some other rolls, work on some dailies. Crips does his thing and you guys will still make a delivery and you just have to kind of check back with him once in a while to make sure that he's good on materials. So with that, we are going to sign off. Um, if this was helpful, um, I have more coming. We're going to cover all the roles in different segments. Uh, don't forget, hit the like button, uh, subscribe, all that YouTube jazz. You guys know the drill. And uh, I hope to see you guys back. With uh, the other roll rundown. It was me, Limpy Pete, and Phil the Crab. Managed to get ourselves locked in the safe after a weekend of.